वेलकम टू पराकू पैंडा um i'm sure you've heard the word thug right it's an english word but it has actually been derived from a sanskrit and hindi word which is thug that means to steal or thief or villain right but did you know the origin of this word is actually a clan in india in central india to be more precise that is completely eradicated now that's right in the middle of the 17th century there's actually an entire clan of people who had made thieving and robbery and murder their profession this is legit it actually existed and you must be wondering that how did this begin right how do people just wake up one day and decide that now i am going to be a thief um so there are many stories about how this originated but it's very ambiguous as to which one is true so i'm just going to like tell you all of them so one of them is that a bunch of people murdered a favorite slave of akbar's and then ran away and then started this clan which i feel like is very interesting because what so many things at play here so many things that i want to know more about but who knows another one is that a bunch of muslim people which is uh, murdered a physician in delhi and then ran away and started their own clan of people who thieve and murder because they must have found it's very easy to do um now actually it definitely has origins in north india though this is definitely a thing that has been documented by several people particularly people like ibn batuta and travelers like that who travel through india to get to china and things like that so these people have written very clearly that they have faced these robbers these highway robbers and uh, they call them thugs and why i'm calling them highway robbers is because they had a way of uh, how they operated so their modus operandi was that they attacked people while they were traveling so sometimes they used to count how many victims they have and if there are five people and there are six thugs then they used to straight off attack them but if there are more people and less thugs then they used to go into this sneak mode where they used to like gain the trust of travelers travel with them and then sneak strangle them which is a very interesting i found this very interesting i don't know if other people find murder interesting but i think that's just how all of us are at paraku banda but um this thing of strangling people with either a knotted handkerchief or a noose was a thing associated with these thuggies for a very long time most people who have written about this have written that they strangle people now there are actually many uh theories as to why they used to not like straight up stab people or just carry swords and murder them is one of them which i found again very very interesting was that in the mughal era it was not considered a murder if you did not shed blood which is so if you poison someone or if you strangle someone and murder them it was okay you could get away with it fun facts so that's how actually thuggy started using uh, nooses and handkerchiefs and things like that to murder people and this was so common and it had become such a big deal in india that most people were fed up of them most people most commoners were like you know these people are just a harassment this society is just crumbling to the ground because of these thuggies and things like that i think the turning point in these thuggies lives at lives and deaths was the incoming of the east india company into india particularly because how the british got to know that these thuggies existed was very interesting this one dude zamindar he had a chatis ka akda with some thuggy in his neighborhood and then he went and complained to the east india company ki this dude is making my life miserable and you don't know they are all criminals and things like that so the east india company was like fair enough this guy called nathaniel holdard he went to try and find out what's going on and then he literally burnt the uh, like an entire village to the ground and these were the thuggies of sindhaus now i feel like this was a little uncalled for because he didn't really know anything but that's how the war on thuggy started of the british now obviously this was all well documented and everything so this other guy called william sleeman he became very interested in these thuggies so he tried to capture a few of them and in history it has happened that 
majority of thuggies were caught because other thuggies complained about them so they actually managed to capture this one thuggy who was told that he could be king's witness and he could get away with all the crimes that he has committed so he was like okay fine he took sleeman to a mass grave that had like more than 100 bodies and he gave it away like he was just like ha these four people that thuggy has killed these five people who are buried here that thuggy has killed aise karke he gave away his entire clan he gave away most of the thuggies he knew so then at that moment sleeman was like there is something here and i have to get rid of it it's insanely big then he started an entire department in the government of india which was just dedicated to the coitry and thuggies and he started what was i guess the first very well documented profiling and intelligence uh, group so now in this what they did is they meticulously documented every thuggy that they found and every thuggy they found because of this thuggy aise karke they came to know about this giant clan that spread all over central india and they came to know that these people are basically hereditary thugs like their father teaches them how to do it these people teach their sons how to do it it's like that and because of this sleeman was able to round up more than 400 thugs in like a not a very long span of time and after this relatively in the 1870s the entire clan of thuggies was eradicated so in the recent past actually a lot of uh, academics and historians have been like very skeptical about uh, the british documentation of this clan of people and uh, one of one indian academic sagnik bhattacharya he's written a whole paper about how he's unsure about the image of the thug that was created by the british so what he says is he's not contesting the existence of the thuggies the thuggies definitely existed and this is well documented even by indian scholars but he thinks that the british made the thugs out to be bigger than they were particularly because he felt like they feared the unknown they feared what they could not control and they wanted to bring this whole uh, clan of thuggies under their control so they spread what he calls an information panic so he spread they spread this information that these thuggies are dangerous and whatever and we're trying to get rid of them because not only did they want people to fear the thuggies more than they already did but they also wanted to show that they are doing something for the society for the indian public so he, according to sagnik bhattacharya they not only spread this information panic but they also showed the people that they solved this problem by eradicating the thuggies and all the people supported them for it Now what is the actual story of the thuggies we are not going to know because all of them are dead and the only documentation we have is by the people who killed them so was this entire thing a giant pr move by the british we are probably never going to know do you think that this genocide of this entire clan of people was necessary or do you think it could have been avoided and these people could have been rehabilitated instead please let us know in the comments cuz i'd love to read your thoughts and if you like this you'd definitely like our podcast on weird occupations right here it's amazing we talk about a lot of them and uh, please subscribe to our channel padaku panda right here we release a new episode every friday and our content is awesome